Hi, everybody. I'm Gogo, and I've got something very special for you. If you love KTM's 1290 Superdu, like I do, first of all, you're nuts. Let's just get that out of the way. Second of all, you've probably already seen the videos, looked at the pictures, read the articles about the wheelies and the burnouts and the, and the, the hours and days at Redline is amazing. It's, it's the most fun bike I've ever owned. It's just hooliganism. Fantastic. Um, but what you probably haven't read a lot about or seen a lot about is what happens to the motor after all these wheelies and burnouts and fun, hours and days and months of abusive fun. How does it hold up? Well, if you're curious, this is the video for you. 10 second pause. This video is brought to you by superduke.com. What the hell is that? If you own a Gen 3 KTM 1290 Super Duke car, and you want that thing to handle like you came out of the womb riding it, go to superduke.com and buy yourself either a Sport Link or a Super Link. Change your bike night and day. Trust me. So the question at hand right now is, have you ever seen a KTM 1290 Super Duke car with its pants down? What, first of all, what does that even look like? What I mean is, um, I've taken my motor apart over the winter to be rebuilt. And I was curious what it looked like because it's a lot of abuse. My motor has a lot of abuse. And I'm gonna take you to see every part of the motor. How did it hold up? But before we see how it held up, I need to tell you about what kind of use it's had. Because to be honest, I'm a terrible human being. I'm flawed. I I'm also a contractor. When I'm building something or fixing something and I'm in a compromised situation, Maybe I have to use a tool not the way it was designed to be used. Um, maybe the tool's not gonna survive the job. I don't care, I'm gonna use the tool. If it doesn't survive the day, in the garbage. Tomorrow I'll get a new one. Which is great for focus and getting the jobs done, but as far as the tool go, it sucks. Um, but priorities, right? The problem with this in racing for me is I do the same thing in racing. If I'm in a tight spot and it's the last lap and I have to push the motor a little beyond its designed un envelope, I will. And if, especially if it's to win, if I'm in second or leading and I gotta stay in front of somebody, I don't care about tomorrow. I don't care about next week. I care about now. And that's great for a race, but it's terrible for a motor sometimes. So I've got a lot of that, a lot of those miles. It's happened a lot of times. On my Gen 3 1290 Super Duke, I have two and a half seasons of racing. And to give you an idea what that is, a season is seven, eight, nine races in a year, and each race is three days, full days, red line. Um, then track days, eight track days a year, and some of those track days are two days, red line. And it, I mean, hard, bouncing off curbs against the rev limiter, like going fast. I don't pussyfoot around on track days either. So that's a lot of miles. That's a lot of abuse. On top of that, I bought my bike used from KTM. It was a demo, which is the worst kind of a bike you can get. Uh, you think demos, maybe it's not that bad. It was a demo and it had only track miles. A demo on a racetrack? Forget about it. Is there a worse bike you could kind of buy? Like, oh, I took such good care of it. Nobody took care of this thing, right? So my miles, their miles, I'm surprised my motor even still runs. But it does. No hesitations, no, like, knocking, no vibrations. Usually with a twin especially, you can feel, like, vibrations get a little different as the motor loosens up or tightens up and, 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 then they go, then they blow. So none of that, not even really a loss of power, but still if the 23 season about to start and I don't wanna go into a season with a questionable motor and halfway through it blows up. Gotta wear parts, they're delayed, it doesn't come, you miss a weekend, you lose championships, it's a disaster. So I took the motor apart. I didn't take it apart. I brought it to an excellent KTM tech. Guy's name is Alex Hernandez. Fantastic. Works at Calmoto in Livermore. He's worked on my race bikes since 2010. 
he, he used to be a, a bomb specialist, like in Iraq. Anybody in, in my eyes who could walk up to a bomb that wants to kill you, right? You know, with a canvas suit and a little plastic helmet that's going to protect you, right? And take it apart and, and figure out which wire to cut. That's somebody who understands tolerances and respects instructions and rules, and they go by the book. And that's Alex. He does buy the book. There's, he doesn't do Facebook. He doesn't do any kind of social media. He comes to work. He works. He leaves. It was so hard to get him to agree to this, but I did. I got him to let me go to the shop and film my motor, a 1290 KTM Super Duke R motor with its pants down. Every part spread out on the table. You want to check it out? It's pretty cool. The thing held up. There were a couple of weird things, but uh, it held up good. Yeah, so usually the skirts is where you see, like, you'll see like, like a lot of scratches and stuff, you know. Um, uh, these uh, piston rings rotate nice and smooth. Uh, we're still going to put in your rings, you know, that's just part of the, you know, just to rebuild the motor. Um, nice cross hatch on the cylinders. So what, what, on a motor that's more worn, what would you expect to see? Uh, uh, mainly uh, what I do, so I already did it on this. I did it uh, when I first took it apart. I use my dial bore gauge and just check it at uh, six different spots. And What, to see if it's round? Uh, yeah, if it makes sure there's no uneven wear. And you're perfect. It's all within spec. You know, measured the piston, the cylinder wall clearance. That's all good. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna clean it up. Do, do a new uh, piston oh, ring. You know what? What about that? Tell me about the um the how KTM has the two size pistons for rebuild. Uh, so so yeah, so each cylinder. Um, so if you could see it right here. So they they make and they do it for dirt bikes, street bikes. Uh, where, why don't I see it on here? So it's either uh, you know cylinder one or cylinder two, and that's basically what you go go off of when you're ordering um new pistons. Uh, so this is cylinder one. Uh, sometimes what we do is, um, so I, I do it a lot on dirt bikes. So like say this had a lot of miles and a lot of right. wear on it, it would measure a little bigger than normally. And then we would throw in, and then, you know, throw in a bigger size. Piston. Because with wear, the, the cylinder hole got larger. Yeah. Just yeah. wear it larger. Yeah. Um, so when you rebuild it, you get a bigger piston. Yeah, yeah, we do that a lot with, uh, especially with the dirt bikes. Um, so, so what about this? Does this thing need a bigger piston? No, we got to stick to the same piston size because, like I said, it, it's there's no wear on the, the cylinder. It's perfect. It's still, uh, <laughs> still a nice, um, nice and round, and it, yeah, there's no wear. There's no point on doing that. So, yeah, we got to stick uh, piston number one. So normally. You might expect more wear. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, on so on this here, uh, axial play. You know we check that. Um, plastic gauge it. Make sure the the bearings ain't worn out. And dude, everything checked out good. Um, mm. Same on the on the cases. Let me bring the cases. Yeah. So this is the crank bearings here. These are the plain bearings that we were talking about. Okay. And usually and you for didn't this, even take them out yet. no, not yet. I am gonna pull them out. Uh, we're gonna you know freshen it up, so we're gonna do new new ones. But as you can see, you know there's no like bluing or you know you want to look for you know signs of you know not proper lubrication, uh, signs of it that you know that they didn't spin and stuff. But man, they look. That's I mean, the obviously, kind of stuff. yeah, there's somewhere obviously, but not you know. It's definitely plus bearing. Well, not bad. Like, what it looks like. So that's what mine look like. Yeah. And that's two and a half seasons and 2,500 miles of KTM's roost. And then this is what... This is a street bike? Yeah. With how many miles? About 30,000. 
I mean, there's like the, if you look at the inside wire, it's pretty much similar to yours. It's just, um, you know, definitely here spun on the, on the case. So that's the outside of those versus the outside of this. Yeah, and I talked to KTN, they're like, I told them, you know, with the race bike and stuff. So they're like, ah, well. Really expect, yeah. What do you expect? And if, um, they said, you know, make sure you have, you know, where it goes, just make sure it's not like oblonged out. Make sure it still has a nice little cross hatch, you know, when you press them in. And but stuff, these so. scratches, is that from taking them out? Or is that like the way they were when, like, is that from being in there? Um, I think that is part of like taking them out. But you took these out, and I don't see that they are all scratched up. No, because I knew the Because these actually hand. moved in. <laughs> moved. So it's not just taking them out, but those scratches. No, no, no. The fact that they spun, too, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the only thing. I mean, like I said, they weren't uh, KTM Tech Line when I talked to them. They weren't too concerned with it. They said clean it up real nice. Make sure it's, not, it's nice and round. Make sure it's still got a little cross hatch. Um, yeah. I think it's just part of a, a race bike, you know? By the way, Alice, you got enough motors up on here? <laughs> yeah, I've got a few of those. What the hell? So we got pistons. Oh, you know what I want to ask you? We got pistons, um, rings, cylinders, um, crank bearings. What about the head? What about what about um, rocker arms and valves that all, and that all... cams and stuff? How do the cams look? Uh, the cams look good. They look do we have a cam? Good. Yeah, let me see if I have a cam around here. I'm doing the switch back. Mm -hmm. Cam still look good. Now look at the lobes, still look nice. So let me get a closer to that. So can you rotate that? You know, no abnormal wear. Just normal wear on these. So you'd be looking for like lines and scratches yeah. and shit there? Yeah, signs of a, you know, lack of lubrication and stuff like that. Um, on the heads, where do I have a head at? I think I have a head over here. I like the journals are nice and smooth still. You know, no no lines and scratches. Oh, you'd be looking for the same thing. Yeah. The same lines you'd see in a cam, you'd yeah. see here. And your fallers are still good. So, yeah, I mean, so far everything I've inspected looks good. As I'm putting it all back together or working individually on, like right now I was rebuilding the heads. Still look at it, you know, double take on everything. Just make sure everything still looks good. Like normally, like you probably could have got away with just, you know, replacing springs, uh, valve strings. But uh, we did. They do offer a nice kit that has everything: seal, guide seals, everything. That would have done normally springs and seals, but these kits come with everything, and it's, it's a good deal, actually. So. Go so ahead. you just we just got the rebuild kit, and you just installed the whole kit. Yeah, lap in some new valves. Uh, you know, gonna, I'm gonna lap them in, then I'm gonna put it on the spark plug, and just make sure. Uh, usually, what I make sure it's nice and sealed. Uh, usually, you know, pour some liquid and make sure it's not leaking. Oh, you mean like you actually pour liquid? Oh, you put the, the spark plug back spark in. Spark plug yeah. in there just to just to yeah. close up the hole. Yeah. And then you pour liquid in there and you see if it comes through. Yeah. Yeah. Is there like a time amount of time that it has to last before you see it's, liquid? Uh, you you could um, dude. I usually so what I'll probably do before I leave today, I'll probably do it and probably and put paper, you know, like you know, just tissue paper on intake and exhaust and let it sit overnight really yeah and usually i'll do i'll just i'll just do like you, you could even do coolant or just you, you want to have a little tint that way when i come back in the morning if i see a little bit of blue on the toilet paper or tissue paper or whatever then i know it's not a good seal but i don't see any issues yeah and the tranny of course we always looking at like uh you know mainly like the the dog scene over here for the sliders Make sure those ain't worn out. And like, do you see anything? No, I know everything looks good. Um, so yeah. like, if I if I if you didn't know better, just from your general mechanical experience, 
what would you guess? How many miles would you guess that that thing had on it? Dead nut. <laughs> Come on, be honest. Almost like nowhere on the dogs. That's remarkable. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's hard to even guess. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it looks perfect, to be honest. <laughs> Next thing I like to talk about is the clutch. Um, my clutch in particular is, is a great example of an abused clutch because I start every race from second gear. I use much shorter gearing than stock, like seven or eight teeth, and I start from second gear because first gear would be like this and it would last 10 feet. So um, that's gotta be hard on a clutch, on the fibers and on the basket, but Amazingly, I can do a whole season with one set of clutch fiber discs, right? And um, also, but I've been really curious about the basket. Like, you know, the clutch discs have those, have those teeth on them, right? Like each disc, it's round and it has a, it's like that. So the basket fits in here like that, like this. So, bam, bam, like one's going this way, then one's it's going that way. So there's usually, if you looked down here, you'd see a finger that comes out like this, right? And then the clutch, one clutch disc is here, the other clutch disc is here, the other clutch disc is here, like this, right? So on a worn clutch basket, it usually looks like here and there's a dent, and then here and there's a dent, and then here and there's a dent. And it's a real problem because um, after this abuse, when you, when you pull in the clutch lever, these discs want to move a little bit, but they can't move because they're bound by these, by these dents in the fingers of the basket. So two and a half seasons of racing, plus track days, Plus the abuse of being a demo bike, I figured that clutch basket would be destroyed. There's not a mark on it. You know what I'm curious though? A lot of times, oh, like the group. these baskets get like those hit marks. Yeah. You know, I don't see any hit marks in No, I mean this. You, you could usually film when they're real worn. Like you can see, obviously you're gonna have some uh, marks just from the plates, but not. Yeah, not like you, you know, you usually run your nail through it and you, you know, you start hitting, you know, you could tell they're worn, but yeah, no, this one looks really good. Well, isn't that something you always did on your old bike was like aftermarket clutch? I normally would get slipper clutch, especially on a big twin, because when you decelerate, there's so much engine braking that the rear tire skips, and, and it bounces, and it's unsettling right you go like into the turn but this thing i guess it's i guess it's traction control or abs yeah, MSR, or the motor some, slip regulation and stuff so what does it do does it actually okay so i'm decelerating right and i'll pick two gears and the bike just does this soft drift mm -hmm. sideways and then into the turn or sometimes we'll go like a little bit this way a little bit that way, but it doesn't go cop, 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 yeah. cop. It doesn't, it, it's, how does it do that? Uh, motor slip regulation, which, well, it does have a, it acts just like a slipper clutch, but it does it with RPM. So the, so the ECU gives the motor some revs. Yeah. So it's not just dragging yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is. It's only dragging a little bit. Yeah. Because it is fucking cool. Yeah. No, no, now the yeah. bike goes sideways, and I'm thinking, like, is this a problem? And then, no, it just comes back kind of yeah. gentle, and it's fascinating. Yeah, no, it's not. But you know what's different? This has auto blip, right? So all you guys do is. Yeah. I mean, it's backwards to you. I have upside down shifting. Right, right. Just click, 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 and it does the rest. But it doesn't do it for me. I, I mean, it works, right? <laughs> yeah. But. For instance, Laguna Seca, you're you're charging up this hill, ah, and then kind of turns a little bit to the right as you crest the hill, and then you're braking as you crest, and then you have to turn left 
over the, the like the edge of a cliff, and then you're right. So in between the and you're breaking really hard right. over the crest of the hill. So between that breaking really hard and two downshifts and then throwing in, the motive doesn't really do the auto flip of the no, revs right. perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Like in a tight situation like that, right. it's it's not trustworthy. So I have to use the clutch click click yeah. and just modulate myself and, and let it go in. So standard downshift on a straight, you know, like yeah. into a fine. fine. But otherwise I do mostly, I okay. use the clutch. Yeah. But I don't use the you know, for upshifts, I love it. This is the pump, oil pump. It shows a little bit, you know, like some, like it might have had some something in there. Um, could have been from uh, I, I don't know. You were you staying on top of the oil changes and everything? Yeah. I mean, Did you, you ever see you, any foreign matter like on the screen? You're the one who changes the oil. Yeah. So this is the only thing that I kind of found somewhere on like uh maybe some signs that there's a that you know there was something in there metal something so let's talk about the cam chain tensioner what, what we found and what's going on um if you look if this is your motor and this is one cam and the sprocket here's another cam and sprocket and this is your crank and the sprocket that runs the blue is the chain that, that goes around motor turns cams turn wonderful right but you know it's it's a chain so it's gonna have slack sometimes and stretch a little bit and so in order to keep the chain tight in order to keep tension on the chain you have this little device which is the cam chain tensioner it's it comes stock like this long let's say right so you have to squeeze it tight and it locks in that position, right? And then you insert it in the motor, and then you screw this red cap on from the outside of the motor. Let's say the motor's right here. You screw this cap on. Then this little hole, there's a little access hole over here, and you poke some sort of a tool through it, and it releases the tensioner in one shot. You only get one shot. And if it doesn't work right, you gotta do it all over again. So you, yeah, you put the motor to top dead center, and you put in the tensioner and you tighten it and then poof and bam, it goes and that's the right tension. That cam chain tensioner will maintain the proper tension on that chain forever or until there's a problem, until you rebuild it at 30,000 miles. Something was wrong with ours. So what, is, what does that do? What is it? So, so this is this is a cap that for the chain tensioner, the chain tensioner in a cap. So you put in the chain tensioner, and this holds it right here in place. You know, okay. screw it into the engine. Um, Where's the outside of the engine? Oh, the outside of the engine is. So right here, screw it into okay. the engine. Yeah. Okay. So like, say this is the front one. You just stick it in. So remember, I was telling you, you got to collapse it, set it properly, okay. and release it properly. You release it through that little hole here. Where you push something in there, yeah. And that so, releases the yeah, it's almost tension. like a punch. It's like a special tool, but it, it's really like a, it's like a punch, and mm -hmm. you release it, and that releases a chain tensor. Um, but on yours, what I found that was kind of messed up was you look at that one. See the little tangs right there? It has okay. what six little tangs? One. Yeah, I can see that. I can well, see yours that. only has two because the other four broke off. Um, what would make that break off? You know, the only thing I can think of is that I was telling you last time, the only time these fail, there's a problem with when they're, they don't get set right, or it could be also, you know, it doesn't have proper oil pressure, right. whatever. Um, so when they're not set right, or when they fail, these these don't, so basically it's how it's got to be up against the, the rail. Right. And you know, the engine's turning, is doing this. Um, when it's not working properly, what I've seen if they get stuck, like say like in a halfway position, and it's probably doing this in there, like the whole oh, thing's moving around, because oh. now there's space between there. So I mean, that's the only thing I could think of, other than just like a defect. Because they see scratches in there too. Yeah, so, well, so I found two of the pieces, I found them in there, lodged really? in there. Um, and then the other two, 
uh, the, in the screen. Remember the oil pump? How we had those little marks and stuff. So mm -hmm. I think that's what went through it. Luckily, it's like really soft. I mean, either way, it's not good, but it didn't uh, it didn't cause any damage other than those scratches on the, on the oil pump. So the net net is uh, the the crank bearing, flat bearings uh, spinning a bit. I use Motorex oil, um, same oil I used on Ducati's, same oil I'm going to keep using in the future. I, I think that's just racing abuse. It's a lot of miles that's got on it, hard miles. I, I don't know exactly where it came from, but there it is. Um, you can make your own mind. I don't think that's going to be a problem for everybody. Um, the other thing, the, the cam chain tensioner cap situation. Um, when I talked to Alex about it, he said that going forward, when he adjusts someone's valves or things like that, he's gonna, every time, he's gonna buy new caps and he's gonna reset every cam chain tensioner every time he does the service. Because the cap is like $25 and um, he thinks that it should be done because the installation is a little bit like finicky. You gotta get it right, you gotta know what you're doing. And if somebody didn't, you could avoid a lot of problems. And Alex is really good at avoiding problems and not killing himself with bombs. So who's better than that? So there you go, a 2020 Gen 3 KTM 1290 Superdu car report card. A minus.